Tucked away in the pine forest, at the end of Park Point, is the ruins of the old Minnesota Point Lighthouse, an important part of our maritime heritage that is seldom noticed even by boaters as they sail down the Duluth Superior Harbor. The beacon of the Minnesota Point Lighthouse guided ships arriving off Lake Superior before the age of electricity, before Duluth was a city, and even prior to the Civil War. While this small lighthouse played a critical role to the shipping industry in its time, the structure has been reduced to ruins by wind, temperature, and time over the past 160 plus years since its construction. Because the Minnesota Point Light has played such an important role in the nautical history of this area, let's take a closer look at this important relic from the past. The Minnesota Point Lighthouse was one of the first lighthouses on Lake Superior and one of the finest of all the Great Lakes at the time. While the lighthouse ruins are isolated and accessible today only by boat or a one and a half mile hike through the pine forest, it was once the center of maritime activity and a prosperous fur trading post and commercial fishing village. In the early 1800s, larger ships began hauling cargo into and out of the area. The region's abundant natural resources, consisting primarily of fur and fishing, were very lucrative trades at the time. Most of the merchant ships between 1800 and 1830 were wooden, two-masted schooners and brigantines, much like these. While small by today's standards of 70 to 100 feet in length, they still were not able to travel into shallow waters like the canoes before them. The need for navigation lights was becoming more and more important. The event that really triggered commerce and immigration at the head of the lakes was the opening of the Sioux Locks in 1855. With the opening of the Sioux Locks, it became possible for even larger vessels to enter Lake Superior from Lake Michigan and Lake Huron and open the ship traffic from New York to the head of the lakes. Seeing the natural superior entry between Minnesota and Wisconsin points as the best way to enter Safe Harbor, the federal government commissioned a lighthouse and keeper's residence at the southern end of Minnesota Point to help mariners find the entry. Congress appropriated $15,000 on March 3, 1855 for a lighthouse on Minnesota Point. Work on the foundation of the structure started in the fall of 1856 and materials were stockpiled at the point that year in preparation for completing the lighthouse the following season. The construction contract was for constructing the lighthouse and two short wooden piers to mark the superior entry. This drawing shows the plans for the original design of the light tower. Because of the difficulties with weather and material deliveries, it would take two years to complete the structures. The light was finally activated in the spring of 1858. The 12 foot diameter foundation of the tower was laid with blue rubble stone and the walls were built with red brick brought by ship from Cleveland. The attached one and a half story dwelling was also built with the same brick and topped with a slate roof. The 40 foot tower, which stood on the water's edge at that time, had two 12 pane windows, one at ground level and the other on the opposite tower just below the lantern room and was back plastered inside and out with a white lime and cement mortar mix, making it easy to see from the lake. So once the tower was topped with a wooden lantern room, the circular structure stood a total of 50 feet high. Shingled except for windows on the lake side for the beacon, a fifth order Fresnel lens was installed giving a fixed red indication. The final cost ended up to be $13,675. The fifth order Fresnel lens made by Bardot of Paris was a constant red signal that was fueled by kerosene. The lens was 21 inches high and weighed 400 pounds and had a range up to 10 nautical miles. These Fresnel lighthouse lenses remain priceless jewels of the lighthouse era. Stories have it that fishermen could row their boats around the lighthouse during heavy spring runoff. Another notable feature of the Minnesota Point Light is that in 1823, Lieutenant Henry Wesley Bayfield of the British Navy began the first survey of Lake Superior. He designated a spot on Minnesota Point as the zero point for the lake-wide survey. 
When the Minnesota Point Lighthouse was built, the tower itself was placed over Lieutenant Bayfield's Zero Point, and this became known as the Zero Point Lighthouse. Here's a picture of one of the survey markers that still exists at the end of Park Point. R.H. Barrett moved across the bay and became its first keeper and lived at the lighthouse with his wife Stella and their four children. When thick fog rendered the light useless, Barrett, his assistant, or in some cases his wife, would blow a warning through the logging camp dinner horn. They would keep blowing the horn until an incoming ship would signal a reply. Local residents called it Barrett's Call because it sounded like a farmyard to residences who would hear it on foggy days. Today you can see Barrett's Old Horn at the St. Louis County Historical Society in Duluth. In all, there were six lighthouse keepers that manned the Minnesota Point Light. After the Duluth Canal was dug in 1871, loading and unloading docks were constructed in the shelter of the new Duluth Inner Harbor soon afterward. Shipping traffic began to use the Duluth entry extensively once the harbor area was deepened in the 1870s. Ships sailing to Duluth that entered the harbor through the Superior Entry had to navigate the windy and shallow channel to the Duluth docks. Quite often, ships would run aground. Within two years from the completion of the Duluth Canal, most shipping traffic bypassed the Superior Entry altogether. Because traffic through the Superior Entry became so rare, the federal government shut down the lighthouse on August 6, 1885. As was common with many of the lights constructed during the 1850s, the great distances involved in the district prevented frequent inspections, and thus most of the contractors provided rather poor quality work. As a result, workmanship and materials were frequently less than perfect, and the completed structures frequently deteriorated rapidly. This appears to have been the case at Minnesota Point. Additionally, the ever-changing sandbar also created a problem. The location of the Superior Natural Entry shifted. Within a year of the tower's construction, it no longer stood close to the water, and today it is about a half a mile away. With the economy on the upswing, shipping traffic coming through the Superior Entry once again increased and additional navigational aids at the Superior side were needed. In June of 1878, a pierhead light on the north side of the Superior Entry was built atop the new concrete piers constructed to stall the ever-shifting sandbar. The Fresnel lens was moved from the original lighthouse tower to the new pierhead light, which was lit for the first time on September 1, 1878. The keeper for this new light still resided in the brick dwelling at Minnesota Point. Over the next 30 years, several replacement light structures were built at the Superior Entry. However, frequent storms continued to destroy the somewhat flimsy wooden light structures. So in 1893, the Lighthouse Board determined that with the completion of the new piers at Superior Entry, navigation would be better served with a light on the pier on the Wisconsin side of the channel. And a new light and keeper's dwelling were constructed across the channel on the Wisconsin Point. Thus, the Minnesota Point Keeper's Dwelling was abandoned and, without the constant care of the keepers, deteriorated rapidly. As early as 1907, the light had deteriorated significantly. This postcard shows that by 1907, the lighthouse had deteriorated already. By the early 1900s, vessel traffic in and out of the Superior Entry had increased so much that the Army Corps of Engineers undertook significant improvements to the old natural channel as part of these improvements. A 1,000-foot protection pier was constructed on the Wisconsin side of the opening. There was also activity at the Wisconsin end of Park Point with the construction of the Lighthouse Depot Station and more Superior Canal improvements. These improvements also included the existing Superior Entry Lighthouse, which was built in 1913 and is a beautiful structure that is worth visiting by taking a drive to Wisconsin Point. This picture shows the construction equipment used to upgrade the new Superior Canal, the U.S. Lighthouse Service Buoy Depot, and the remains of the old Minnesota Point Lighthouse. The original Minnesota Point Lighthouse was saved from being dismantled at the request of the U.S. Coast Guard Geodetic Survey to preserve the zero point in its base. And today, 
All that remains is about a 35-foot section of the original tower. It was listed in the National Register of Historic Places on December 27, 1974. The hike to the lighthouse structure travels through magnificent red and white pine forest estimated to be over 200 years old. If you're looking for a fantastic hike, drive to the end of Duluth Park Point and hike the two miles to the site of the old Minnesota Point Lighthouse. It doesn't look like much today, but the dilapidated tower is a reminder of times past and a rich part of the area's maritime history. So I hope you enjoyed this visit to the Minnesota Point Lighthouse and that you get a chance to visit it in person someday. Thanks for watching this video and have a great day.